Okay, this is video two for the force unit notes. In this video, we're going to talk about gravitational forces and talk a little bit about what fields are. Okay, so here's what we have. We have the Earth-Moon system. So here we have the Earth, and over here we have the Moon. And this is a system. So what we have in between them is a force or an interaction because you know these two objects are going to interact within the system and that in, that creates these internal forces which is as an example of Newton's third law because Newton's third law is internal forces within a system now what these forces are or this this interaction it creates this gravitational force so the Earth is pulling on the moon, and the moon is pulling back on the Earth with the same strength force. And notice that these forces are, are the same magnitude, but opposite in direction. Now, something that might be a little curious here, we use the letter R for distances. We can kind of think about the moon going around the Earth in one giant circle. So the distance between the Earth and moon would be like the radius of that circle. So I believe that's one reason why we could use uh, an R. Now, um, Newton was the one who started giving us this idea of how to find gravity. And what Newton discovered was that any two objects exert gravitational forces on each other that will be proportional to the masses of the two objects and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between their centers. So here's what Newton discovered that the gravitational force is proportional to the product of the two masses and inversely proportional to the distance between them squared. And this is Newton's universal law of gravity. Notice what that means then is that we have an inverse square law. Gravity, or the force due to gravity I should say, is proportional to 1 over r squared. So as the distance uh, increases, the, the gravitational force decreases almost exponentially. Um, so if the distance were to go from uh, 1 meter to 2 meters, you know, twice as far away, the force would become 4 times weaker. And if the distance were to go from 1 to 3, the force would be 9 times weaker. Now, this proportionality, this alpha symbol, proportionality, that means that there is a constant of uh, proportionality between the two. And roughly 100 years later, another scientist named Henry Cavendish uh, was able to figure out what that proportional constant is. So the way we see this now is that this force due to gravity equals capital G M1 m2 over r squared, where this capital G is the proportional or constant of proportionality. And what Henry Cavendish discovered was that this has a value of 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th Newton meter squared per kilogram squared. That is small, and that's one reason why Newton was never able to figure out what that constant was. He knew that there was a constant, but he couldn't figure it out because, you know, at the time the equipment was not uh, sensitive enough. Now, this is a vector. All forces are vectors. And looking at this, there's really no vectors in this. You know, g is not a vector, mass is not a vector. However, position is. So we need to put a little tiny unit vector, r hat right there. Now, what r hat is, if I were to make a quick little Cartesian coordinate system, a hat is a unit vector. So, for instance, this right here would be x hat. And this right here would be y hat. And what they are is a vector that points in the x direction or the y direction and it has a magnitude of 1. So what it does is it, it converts any 
pure number into a vector for you. Because if you take any scalar multiplied by a vector, you get a vector. So these unit vectors, this y hat and this x hat, it takes any number, and when you multiply it by x hat or y hat, it turns it into a vector. So what r hat is, is just some sort of vector out in space. It's not specifically on a y or x or even a z axis. It's just somewhere out in space. It has a length of 1, and it has a direction. So if I take this stuff right here, which is all scalar, and if I multiply it by this right here, it converts it into a vector. Okay, uh, something else I need to discuss with you. These units right here. This is one way of writing the units. Um, another way would be cubic meter per um, kilogram second squared. And I'll leave it up to you to do the algebra to figure out how we go from here to there. Okay. Gravitational forces uh, exerted by ordinary objects on each other. It's so small that's negligible in most cases. Uh, we only feel gravitational forces between large objects and ourselves, such as the Earth. The Earth has such a large mass that we're able to feel its gravitational effects. So, one of the models that we have to help us understand this is called the field model. And what we postulate is that all objects with mass are surrounded by a gravitational field. We represent this field with vectors. So here is our gravitational field. Now, some things to notice about this field. As you get farther away, the field lines get wider apart. So that's showing us that the gravitational field becomes weaker as we get farther away, which is what we would expect because gravitational forces become weaker. Um, so what this is then is a non-uniform field. And uniform versus non-uniform fields will become more important when we study electricity. But what I want you to see is that the field becomes weaker as you get farther away because the spacing between the vector lines becomes wider. Now, the, the letter we use to represent this is lowercase g, not a capital G. And when we get near the, uh, the surface of the Earth, g equals right around 10 newtons per kilogram. Again, this is only near the surface. Um, sometimes you'll see people write it as uh, 9.81. So what I like to do, I just like to round it up to 10. It, it makes the math a little easier. Uh, something else you may notice, this newtons divided by kilograms. Well, a newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. So when you take a newton divided by a kilogram, that leaves you with a meter per second squared. So, sometimes you'll see it written as 9.8 or 10 meters per second squared. That's the same thing as a newton per kilogram. One thing that's kind of important is that we really don't know what gravity is. It's an open area of research. We understand its effects. We can find forces. We can find accelerations. But we really don't know what causes gravity. So, um, one of the ways we have of understanding what it is, is that this gravitational interaction is created when two gravitational fields interact. So, for example, when the Earth's gravitational field interacts with the Moon's gravitational field. So, by the sheer fact that these fields overlap and interact with each other, this creates the gravitational force or the gravitational interaction. But again, this is still a theory. We're not sure if this is correct or not. Okay, so 
some effects. Well, weight. How much something weighs. That is a gravitational force. And we want to be able to calculate the weight of an object. So the way we do this, um, well, the gravitational force equals capital G, and the two objects will be the mass of the Earth times the mass of the person divided by, now the distance separating is the radius of the Earth because it's always from center of mass to center of mass. So the radius of the Earth would be the distance between the person and the, the Earth. All right, so let's uh, put this into practice then. Um, my mass is 90 kilograms. So when we go to calculate the mass of something, or the weight, or let's say I'm calculating my weight. So my weight, which is the force due to gravity. So the mass of the Earth, 5.97 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. My mass is 90 kilograms. Radius of the Earth is 6.37 times 10 to the 6th meters. Don't forget to square that. And we find out that my weight, which is the force due to gravity, is 883 Newton. So I weigh 883 newtons. That's a that's a long way to to do this. That's a lot. Um, it's a lot of math. There's got to be a way to to shorten it. Well, if I wanted to calculate my weight, your weight, everyone's weight, notice that this would be the same for every person. G would be the same. The mass of the Earth would be the same. The radius of the Earth would be the same. That would all be the same. So let's go ahead and calculate those. And don't forget to square your R. And when we do this, we find that this comes out to 9.81 newtons per kilogram. And hopefully you recognize that as G, lowercase g. So what that means then is, you know, if we are close to the center, or if we're close to the surface of the Earth, one way of calculating how much something weighs, or its force due to gravity, is simply mass times lowercase g. But again, you can only use that when you are close to the surface of the Earth. If you get further away, like satellites, planets, whatever, you have to use uh, the full equation here. All right, well, that concludes video two.